Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of Direwolf 20. My name is Ryla, and as you can see, we are once again in the Nexus. I've done a little bit of extra work, huh? I haven't decided if I like this or not. It might be a little bit too gaudy, uh, but I actually added... Let's turn into a bat so I can fly up a little bit, and you can see. Um, but I've added glowstone covers with... Uh, and outlined them in some coal strips... Uh, just to add a little bit of a pattern to the floor, along with some gray lamps here. I figured the uh, gray lamp on its own would be nice. It actually is. It's just very basic. Uh, so I went ahead and added this little bit here, thinking maybe it'll look nice. Uh, I haven't quite made up my mind. On one hand, I like it. On the other hand, I'm like, I don't know. I'm not so sure. So uh, I've also been doing a little bit of work over here in the second room. It's not quite done. I made these glowstone illuminators right here uh, from thermal expansion. There are several steps involved and they require melting down some glowstone. So I did indeed go into the nether and gather some more glowstone because I just did not have enough. So we got that going. I'm going to outline it. This is actually wool. Black wool. I didn't want to use up all of the coal. I used up way more of the coal than I thought. So these are just black wool covers and then these little guys here obviously I haven't finished it uh, and then the blue stained glass just to give it a little extra something at the top um, more light make it look nice oh, if I can get out there we go so I'll finish that up uh, and add a little more detail but this is going to be a basic machine room and then of course we'll add on an extra part over here and then another dome feature over there um, and I also wanted to show you these Oblivion Bees from last episode or the episode before. Can't quite remember. Uh, but if you recall, we found some Oblivion Bees that I think might give off Ender Pearls. Or I hope they do anyway. Uh, and I set them up over here. They do uh, are aggressive, so they will kill me if I'm not careful. And I put the End Stone because the required End uh, as their fertilization requirement. Uh, instead of flowers, they required the End. Uh, and I thought it meant End Stone. And if you notice, however, when we look at the bees here, we get this, other than not being able to see, and zombies, uh, hurry up and die. Thank you, you are so noisy. Um, we got these no flowers saying that it does not recognize hive members are not finding the right flowers, so the end stone is actually not what they need. So they are not working, in fact. Uh, and I went online and looked up a little bit more information, and they actually need dragon eggs. <laughs> so if you get a bee and it says that it requires uh, end, ooh, apparently they can still hurt you, uh, and it requires an end for the flower, it actually means a dragon egg. And we have not been to the end yet. We have not taken on the dragon. I'm not seeing that happening any time in particular soon. So these bees are useless. Totally useless at this point in time. I can't do anything with them. Uh, like I said, I don't want to go to the end and get a dragon's egg quite yet. And you basically need a dragon's egg in order to create more dragon's eggs, which you can do in this mod pack. You can actually get more dragon eggs. And they're craftable. Totally craftable. They require draconic chunks, which require draconic dust, which requires the draconic bee. And of course the draconic bee, if you start following it back, uh, it well, you know, come to think of it, can I make that? Hang on, hang on. Is it the abandoned? Yeah, you need to be able to breed the oblivion with the nameless to get the abandoned to uh, to get that. And so we cannot breed oblivion bees because we don't have the dragon eggs. So you need at least a dragon egg in order to get more dragon eggs. And let's turn off this timer because this timer creates a lot of lag. I was making a bunch of glass for my builds. Okay, oh, no, not the hopper. I wanted that. There we go. So, I have a timer. I just fill up the, uh, I think I showed this before. I just fill up this guy, this little hopper here, and it feeds sand into the controller, uh, and then the timer activates this every 15 seconds, so it automatically fills, and then once it hardens into glass, the, this hopper pulls it out and drops it in here. Uh, so it's a nice little system, but the timer does every 15 seconds. You know, it, it, it actually will cause a little bit of lag if you leave it on for too long or just let it go. There's no point in having things work if you're not using them, so to speak. So anyway, since we can't use those bees and we can't get ender pearls and I've been working on this build but I need to break from building because this is a lot of building and it's taken me a while and we're not even really done. 
Uh, I think it'll look kind of neat when it's all done. I thought about connecting these two by some sort of hallway, but I think I kind of like the idea of going outside in between them. This world has a, just it's an all-day world. There's no nighttime here, so and there's no weather, so why not? Uh, but yeah, but I need a break from building. So what we are actually going to do today, and you might have guessed from what is in my inventory, is we are going to play with Mistcraft. I am going to attempt to make a Mistcraft world for bee breeding, and I'm turning into a zombie. I don't want to be a zombie, thank you. <laughs> That's demented looking. <laughs> Uh, apparently my helmet broke and I have a Bane mask. And that, yeah, this is, not, <laughs> this is uh, I don't know if it's going to be much better with me being me. Let's see. Yeah, that that's not much better. <laughs> it's not as funny looking as the zombie, but it's still kind of, it's kind of disturbing. Anyway, uh, we're going to work on Mistcraft today. Uh, we had, I, th I thought that the nice little elves, oops, know what I wanted to do. Uh, brought us a whole bunch of symbols and pages that we had uh, for the miscraft stuff, but I cannot seem to find them, so I don't know what happened to them. I don't know if maybe Just Star has them somewhere and he put them somewhere safe, or if maybe when I was moving things around I accidentally deleted things, and hopefully it's not that case. I'm hoping I don't accidentally delete things. Um, but if I did, I apologize, number one, to any of my server mates who may be watching. Uh, and number two, we do, in fact, actually, you know, one of these notebooks had stuff in it. I don't remember which one, though. Let's take a look. Um, this one. Oh, and I found a diamond ore block, which is good. So I flew around and got uh, a bunch of the libraries here, because this is a Mistcraft age that we're in now. And so I actually went and raided a couple of the library, or more than a couple. I raided a few libraries in the area and grabbed all their pages. And we also have the descriptive book that Jastar used to create the Nexus, or uh, Nef Nephilim, I forget what we named it. I can never, oops, not what I wanted, I can never remember. We have it, did I put it here? Yeah, Niflheim, Nif Niflheim, Nif Niflheim, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> and it actually has a lot of the basic stuff that I want to use, a lot of the pages that I want to use already, because I'm going to want the same thing. I'm going to want an all-day world with no weather. Uh, so we can actually use pages from that to create new ones. Uh, and we've also got, uh, let's see, if I, can I actually move them like this? Okay, well, that one was empty. That was a bust. Um, let's see. Lush Swamp Biome. Sorry, I'm trying to get this all cleared out. Not, not, not that one. I don't want to clear that one out. There we go. Okay, yeah. So these are all clear now. Uh, so we can use some of the ones that are in here and take advantage of that. And also we have this extra symbols that he created where he puts anything that's essentially a duplicate. He puts all his duplicates in here. So we have this duplicate one that had a lot in it, which I have now added to from the ones that I have found just wandering around the biomes. Uh, in the the biome here and gathering from the libraries and then we also have this guy which like I said has a lot of the ones uh, here's the biomes that he used here uh, and this is you know some of the modifiers and here's the normal Sun and normal stars and the zero length Sun and that means it's an all-day thing um, so it's it's really nice. I don't have to worry too much. Uh, my biggest thing is I'm going to want to represent all of the various biomes that the bees are going to need. And that is going to be a combination of desert. You need a dry, dry, uh, excuse me, a hot, dry, and then a hot, damp, which is the jungle. You'll need a normal, normal, which is a plain or a forest. Um, you'll need a normal, damp, which is a marshland. And I think that's all you need. There are nether bees and there are water bees that have different requirements, but uh, the extreme requirements... Oh, and we'll need the cold for the wintry bees, so we'll need a cold normal. Um, and then there are, like I said, there are more specific where they do get into more requirements, like, like I said, the nether bees or some other variation thereof. But we, we can, you know, cross that bridge when we get to it. Right now we just need to actually make the basics, cover the basics. We won't, it'll be a while before we get to that level. Uh, so I need to make um, 
some of these guys. Uh, I've never really done too much with Mistcraft. I've done a little bit. Uh, I know I want to use another notebook for this guy. Okay, let's see how we do. Let's see. I think I put a notebook here. Right, okay. And then I can add pages. Oops. I don't want to name it anything at this point in time. Uh, but we are going to need leather, which we have here. I don't want all that, just some of that. And we're going to need ink sacks, which I have. I was killing squid as we go. And we're going to need bottles of water. Uh, water. Bottles, bottles, bottles. Okay, let's get some glass bottles because we need to make ink. And in order to make ink, you actually need water bottles. It's uh, not just like that. It's two bottles of ink and you get the, the Mistcraft ink vial, which is what we want. So it looks like we can get a total of six, which is good. I think, did I get enough water bottles? I don't know. I think I did. It looks like I did. It looks like it's going to work out perfect. It is. It's going to work out perfect. I totally did that on purpose. That was not accidental at all. Totally did that on purpose. That's how together I am. I am with it. I am hip, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and put these here, right? No. Here? No. Here? Yes. Yes, I know exactly what I'm doing. Okay, and then we need paper, which... Do we have paper? If we don't have paper, we can make paper out of these paper. It is one of the best things I found out, is you can use wood chips, put wood in the pulverizer, it gives you wood chips, and you can use that to make paper. It is so much nicer than having to worry about weeds, or not weeds, reeds, reeds, and growing them. We've got that oak farm right there, so it's... All kinds of stuff going. Okay. Put this here, and then we create a link panel. And we'll need a, a few of these to get started. There we go. And it actually used up all three of the inks. So each each ink vial apparently creates one link panel. Uh, and the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything else is I'm actually going to create two linking books, like so. And I am going to link them right here with the overworld. Okay. Well, not with the overworld, but with the nexus. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and link them both. There we go. And I'm going to put one in my case here. There we go. Oh, look, we have more miscraft pages. Totally didn't realize that. Let's get these out of here. Okay, and that's, apparently I'm full. Uh, where's my linking book? We're going to take this linking book here, and we're going to stick it in my pack, and that's going to be my emergency linking book that I'm hopefully going to keep on me at all times. Uh, and so that way, if something happens and I need to get home quick, I can link, pull that out and link that. This is one that once we make an age, we're going to use this to create, um, uh, we're going to use this guy. Let me take this guy out so I don't accidentally put anything in him. Um, we're going to use this guy uh, to actually put where we spawn into the new world. And so that way we have just, you know, an, an immediate exit too as well. So if, if something happens, we can escape. And if somebody stumbles upon our age for some reason, comes across the book, wants to see what's in it, and goes there, they'll be able to get back if they forget a linking book. It's just generally welcome to have an extra Lexo. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear these out. Did I drop those? I don't think I... I guess I dropped those. Put these extra symbols in. Okay. It... What is this? Oh. Whatever, whatever. This is being a little bit more difficult than I thought. Here we go. Okay. I meant to do all that off camera, but apparently that's not the case. This is just stuff I've collected along the way. Okay. So, in order to create a linking book, from what I understand, we have to keep this for later. These are two extra books. And then we are going to want to create our own book by adding pages from these notebooks. So if I were to click on one of these, uh, for example, uh, we actually need to go in order. So let's do the extra biomes here. I actually want small biomes. I want a tiny, but I don't have the tiny biome symbol. Uh, but I do have a small biome symbol. So we don't have the tiny available to us, but we do have the small and that's going to be good enough. I'm not going to complain any at all about this. We have lots of duplicates in here, so that's that's good. Small biome. So if I click on that, if I right click on it, no. If I put it here, oh, you know what I need? I need paper. I need more paper. That's what I need. I need some of this paper, and some of this paper needs to go here. 
Okay, now it should work. Now if we click on small biome, da, 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 which, ooh, there it is right there. Click on it, right click it. There we go. Okay, so it makes a duplicate, which is fantastic. So that way we have uh, one here still and one here. Now if I have a duplicate in here, which I do not of the small biomes, but if I had two small biomes, I could just drag it and drop it here and then use it up that way. But since I've only got the one, if I used it in this linking book, it'll only be in this linking book. And we're actually going to call this uh, BH1. In case there's anything bad, we can make a BH2, BH3, blah, 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 and get until we're happy with it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go through these. This is going to require a little bit more thinking than I'm prepared to do while talking. So I'm going to prepare these and I will be right back. Okay, and I think I have something that may work. Let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, these are our biomes up here, and these are some of our, modif our world modifiers. Uh, you always want a modifier to go before the uh, item. So in this case, we have small biomes is acting as a modifier for these various biomes. Uh, we have frost forest, which will hopefully get us our wintry bees. Uh, sometimes these frost or these icy can have different levels of temperature, and they can actually be too cold. Uh, so I'm, I'm taking a gamble on the frost forest because I don't have any taiga or anything similar um, in our system. I don't think I do. You know, actually, let's take a quick look. I got kind of, once I had what I thought would work, I, I didn't pay as much attention. Oh, we do have Taiga. All right, so let's go ahead and swap that out for Taiga. Is it just Taiga Hills? It's Taiga Hills. I'm trying to avoid hills, but that's the way it goes. We have duplicates here, so I'm just going to grab one, and we can actually swap that out. So we're going to take out the Frost Forest. We're going to add in the Taiga Hills. Uh, and the order that you see it here is the order in which it's going to be written, which is kind of important, because like I said, the modifiers have to go first. So the small biomes, now we have Taiga Hills, which should be okay. Uh, jungle Hills, because I didn't have any regular jungle. Uh, Lush Swamp, because I didn't have any regular swamp. Uh, meadow Forest, or just, excuse me. Oh, wait, Meadow Forest, it does say Meadow Forest. Okay, so Meadow Forest and Desert Biome. And actually, what I want to do before we get started is I actually want to swap out the, I thought it was just regular meadow, but if it's Meadow Forest, I actually want to swap that out for Plains, which I have here somewhere. Plains, plains, plains. Let's see. I don't know what that is. That one intrigues me, but I'm afraid of it. <laughs> Phantasmagoric Inferno. Phantasmagoric. Is that? Am I pronouncing that correctly? I can't pronounce words correctly all the time. The rainforest would be interesting too. Didn't I see a plains? Did I go too far? Pasture. Huh. Well, there's pasture, but no plains. I would think it'd be after the H, isn't it? After the H? Alphabetically speaking, it should be. Do -do -do. I guess not. I could have sworn I saw planes. Huh, okay. Well, Meadows Forest will should work. I don't really, like I said, I don't. I was trying to avoid forests, but that's okay. The pasture intrigues me. Not to mention there's a branch of bees that requires planes. So if I could have gotten that, that would have probably helped quite a bit. Um, but we have the Meadow Forest, then we have just a regular old desert. And then we have the world modifiers, which is, I actually took directly from uh, what just are used to create this world. So it should be the same in terms of uh, the zenith, zenith phase zero length sun, meaning the sun's going to be at noon. And it, it is now, and it's just going to stay there. And then we have uh, normal stars, normal moon. So the moon's going to do its thing, despite the fact that the sun never moves. And then we have normal lighting, no weather. Uh, standard world and a starfisher. So somewhere in the world, in case I lose my linking book, uh, somewhere in the world there will be a starfisher that we can use to escape. Then to create the book, we actually have to put leather here, take our link panel here, uh, and then we can add in like so, and then call this be age one. Okay, and then this is our descriptive book right here. Aha, we get an achievement, which is awesome. Okay, and this descriptive book should say be age. It does. Okay, and we have our linking book here, which is very important. Uh, let's go ahead and put some of this stuff up. Let's put these guys here. Okay, and let's put my descriptive book. Let's actually put this guy. Let's see, where is he? This is my notebook with all the pages in it, which we moved over, so there's no more pages. So let's go ahead. I guess I shouldn't have named him, but that's okay. We're going to put them in our little book box here, like so. This is the book we need. 
Let's drop all those. And then what I'm going to do before we go into this new world, uh, well, first we need a stand. Let's make a stand real quick. Just make it so we have it all nice and pretty. But before we do anything and hop in, because sometimes these worlds can be horrible, awful, terrible places that will instantly kill you, or at least try to instantly kill you, I am actually going to do just a quick little chest here, and I'm going to dump all of my stuff in here. Just everything. Just get put it all in here, so that way if I die, I don't lose anything important, uh, except for the linking book. We want that. And actually, we want another one of those guys. And I do kind of want my spare linking book, which is in this guy. I want two linking books on me, just in cases. So I said I was going to leave it there, but apparently I lied. We'll make another one to put in there. Give me this. Thank you. Okay. So let's go ahead and make one more of these guys. So when we get in there, we have it. I'm probably going to, you know, let's go ahead and take some blocks with me, just so we have those. Okay, and I'm going to change into, let's go ahead and put that there. I'm going to change into a bat so I can immediately fly. So if anything's going to try to kill me right away, because if we get into a dark world or something happens, I can immediately fly away. And it's going to take a little while to load. Not as long as I thought, actually. Okay, I was going to cut that out, but it was actually short. So immediately put that here, and then immediately put a marker and this is going to be uh, we'll say linking book okay and we're gonna call this B world so imaginative I know it is amazing okay and then we're going to take a look around there are pigs which is excellent uh, what are these oak leaves they're purple okay this is interesting and there's no grass which is weird does this world not have grass? Okay, so this is where we spawn in. Oh, and I meant to mention too that if anyone is interested in learning more about Mistcraft, this is not a tutorial. I do recommend uh, various people you can go look at. I would probably recommend um, Direwolf20. He's, he's the one I went to and watched. Uh, he's usually my go-to person. So we have a seasonal spruce forest. Here's our taiga hills. Okay, let's take a look around because we want to make sure that the biomes are correct. That's really what we are here for is everything's loading in. And we have no grass, which is interesting. We have flowers and plants and everything, but no grass whatsoever. We can actually silk touch and bring in a, glass, a grass block, so that's not such a thing. Meadow forest, okay. Meadow, meadows, good. This must be the jungle with purple leaves and purple vines, which is weird, but I'm actually kind of digging it. <laughs> I think it's kind of, I actually kind of like it. I think the part that I don't like is there's no grass. But like I said, we can bring in a grass block and take care of that. That's not so, not such a big thing. So here's, here's our lush swamp with no water. Oh, there's another thing. There's no water here. Okay, that's interesting to note. So what is the swamp end in the taiga hills? Back to taiga hills. Meadow forest, jungle hills. This actually might be a nice little spot to start off with. Uh, because a lot of, we've got, what, four biomes right here? Three or four? I don't see any desert, though. Desert's one of the ones that we definitely need for the modest bees. Okay, so I'm just going to fly around a little bit. Yeah, see this, I bet, oh, there's some water. I was going to say, I bet this is where water would be, but there is no water. Oh, this is a desert. Okay. This is desert, and it's just not actually desert. It's just so there's no sand. This is a weird world, but I don't seem to have any instability. Yeah, I don't have any bad side effects. How the heck do I have watercolor on my head? That is, does that affect me? Go away, zombie. I want to see. I doubt that, I doubt that appears if I turn into me. I don't think that would actually appear. Let's see. Let's take a look. I gotta look. Nope. No effect whatsoever. All right. Well, that's weird. Let's take those out. I don't... Yeah, that's strange. Okay. Interesting. So I think this may work. I might... I might do a little something to just play with it a little bit. What is this? It's an Ars Magica root. I hear you creepers. Yeah, I might... This might work. I might... Mm, huh. I don't know. I'm not sure. If I bring in grass, that will help. 
we've got really all everything we need. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, none of the worlds we're going to create really is perfect. The, there's the sun, no weather, and we've got all of the different biomes that we need very closely lumped together. So right about here, I think, would suffice. Uh, we've got the cold next to the desert. Chop down these trees. And then what we have here? Swamp. A little bit of swamp right here. Yeah, okay. I think I can make this work. Here's the meadow forest. Yeah, yeah, we can make this work. All right, so I think I think I may claim this as our bee world. I think this may suffice. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to call it an episode. Let's get rid of that. And I'm going to try to find the perfect spot. I think it actually may be right here, tell you the truth. And then I'm going to flatten it out and cut down all the trees and light it up and uh, hang out here for just a little while and make sure that nothing bad happens or nothing bad occurs. And I think, yeah, I think this will be the start of our bee world. I'm definitely bringing in some grass blocks because this freaks me out a little bit. I don't know why. Weird things freak me out. <laughs> it's, just, it's the little things. Purple trees, no problem. No grass, eh, got to fix that. Not going to work. Ain't going to lie. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back home. And we'll sign off at the Nexus. So that way I can become myself again and say goodbye without worrying about dying. Don't want to be deathed. Deathed is totally a word. I totally turned that into a verb. It's a thing. Trust me. So yeah, so next episode we will be working and getting the bee started. Just for the beginning. So... Thanks everyone for watching. My name is Ryla and I will talk to you later. Bye.